think this is a budget which is reflective of inclusivity, innovative, and impactful. This budget is multidimensional. It addresses a very vast span of subjects. It will have an impact on almost every section of society. It has, in a very unique way, addressed the issue of increasing employment for our young men and women, particularly with its focus on skill development so that we have more and more employable young people. The thrust is on making our young people job creators, not job seekers. Mm. Even the angel tax has been removed for startups. Infrastructure and tourism are two areas which will significantly provide employment opportunities. Also business opportunities, also trade opportunities also support India's competitiveness in manufacturing or provision of services. And therefore, if you see on a holistic way, mm. this is a budget that addresses so many things simultaneously. It focuses on the East, mm. the backward states of Bihar, Odisha, uh, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh, Jharkhand. That entire Eastern belt has received a significant thrust. Prime Minister since 2014 has maintained that until the eastern part of India develops, we cannot become a developed nation. Similarly, it's very pragmatic. Right. The gold and silver import duty reduced to 6%. It really will give a big boost. Women will be empowered. We have the marriage season coming up. Mangal Sutras will get cheaper. But more importantly, our, small, our artisans who use small quantities of gold with their intricate offerings, can now look at export market also, can now look at a greater uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, involvement in the Indian trade. Mm. So I think this has looked at very minor issues, but in a macro context. Right. I would also like to speak to you about FDI, because this was a point specifically mentioned by the finance minister, saying that the government will work in the coming months towards simplifying FDI rules to encourage more investments, uh, also to encourage use of rupee in overseas investments. Give us a sense of the thinking and some of the changes on the anvil. Well, the changes on the anvil are still under deliberation, otherwise the Honorable Finance Minister would have given it to you. But I think the thinking is to make India an attractive destination. Under Prime Minister Modi, we've seen massive growth in FDI over the last uh, decade. We believe that we are now in a strong position, strong fiscal position, strong foreign exchange reserves, fastest growing large economy of the world. We've clocked uh, an average of 8% for three years in a row. We hope to continue that streak in the years to come. The world is looking up to India for leading global growth and in that context we do believe that it will be important for us to also encourage more and more international players to come and establish in India, manufacture in India, provide services from India. And with the greater interest in the developed world to look at India, particularly in Europe and the US, Middle East, they are all looking up to India to become their engine of manufacturing, engine of provision of services, mm -hmm. engine of R&D. We believe that uh, there may be some areas in, uh, where we can further liberalize or make foreign direct investment foreign to India smoother and simpler. Any uh, sectors which you feel on top of your mind which you feel that liberalization is possible? You won't get that headline. <laughs> okay, all right. The next question, sir, would be about e-commerce hubs. Uh, the finance minister spoke about that. Uh, is there a plan to uh, launch a certain number of hubs in the next one or two years? That's right. We do believe that we could do 10, 15 hubs, but we'll have to look at the interests of business. Ultimately, it'll have to be a demand-driven uh, initiative. The idea is to make it very simple to operate in the e-commerce hubs, allow the free flow of goods, have custom clearance within the e-commerce hub. And I'm delighted that the Honorable Finance Minister has brought it uh, into the budget so that we can start operationalizing a few and test the market for it. 
I do believe that there is significant possibility for growing our e-commerce exports and this will become a medium for that. Right. Now speaking about uh, Chinese investments, uh, one of the things that you've been strongly pushing is to make sure that India rises as a manufacturing hub for the world and is an alternate manufacturing destination. Uh, the economic survey noted that India must be open to Chinese FDI or be aligned to the Chinese supply chain. How do you see that suggestion, sir? Well, I think these are suggestions or ideas that keep coming every year from uh, different economists in different forms. Uh, we respectfully will examine all of these suggestions and ideas at all appropriate forums. In terms of encouraging domestic manufacturing, give us a thinking of the government. There has been a duty rejig. Uh, the finance minister has said that the entire customs duty regime will also be looked at comprehensively. Uh, where do you think uh, you would like to take India as a manufacturing destination with these changes in customs duties? Well, if you see some of the ideas that she has promoted are very, very welcome. For example, the announcement around the inputs that go into textiles and uh, leather goods. Mm. Now, their import duty reduction mm. will not hurt but will actually support labor-oriented manufacturing in textiles and leather. Mm. Similarly, critical minerals. The, it's a reality that we will have to bring in critical minerals from other parts of the world, particularly if we have to increase our foray and make our electric mobility more competitive. Mm. So it's a budget that has been very thoughtful, mm. very incisive in particular sectors which needed to be supported. Right. Uh, my final question would be about the Jan Vishwas Bill 2, which was also mentioned. Uh, further measures on ease of doing business, decriminalizing certain laws. Could you give us a sense of uh, some measures that are under consideration, some feedback that you've received from the industry? Well, I must uh, place on record my deep appreciation of all my colleagues at government who helped craft the Jan Vishwas 1 Bill. We had the support of 18 or 19 different departments. Mm. Uh, we covered about 42 different laws and nearly 182 different sections which we were able to decriminalize at one shot. And the name itself reflects a two-way traffic. The people of India trust Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Modi's government trusts the people of India. Mm. And that is why it was called the Chan Vishwas Bill by Prime Minister Modi. We believe that the time is ripe for the second tranche. We are in a dialogue with private sector, with with other government uh, departments or other ministries. We are in touch with board, trade bodies, with exporters. We are in fact trying to crowdsource ideas on what are the particular areas which we should focus on. If there is any particular law which they believe or people believe we can decriminalize, make compliance burden easier, make it easier to do business, we are very, very much ready and willing. In fact, I'm often complaining to industry bodies, including CII, FICI, that you don't give, you're not demanding enough. Mm. Please come up with more ideas for compliance reduction or decriminalizing. Through your channel, I'll appeal to everybody that please give us your suggestions, which are the particular laws. For example, we are working on the legal metrology mm. to see whether the Weights and Measures Act can be uh, further simplified or decriminalized. Like that, there are many other laws where if we get feedback from MSMEs, from our small traders, retail traders, from the people at large, or from businesses, all of us in government are ready and willing to do our best. However, you will, you will appreciate we cannot compromise on the safety and security of our citizens. Any good news on FTAs in the coming months, sir, that we expect? Well, we are always very optimistic. Either UK, EU might take time, but on the UK FTA? 